Hey guys, Chris here with a profile with my friend Tony. Hi. Uh, he, he has trash. Um, sorry, uh, white trash, no, uh, Scareclaw. Yep. Monodium. Yep. Yeah, it's his deck. You, you, you talk about it. Awesome. Um, so, main deck wise, uh, I play three Rykarts. Just because for your Scareclaw engine, it's going to be great. Um, you're going to be mostly searching your arrivals off of that. Um, it's just a good extender for things. Um, Does it just search arrival? Pretty much. Um, I also have Sclash in there. Um, but yeah, so. Sclash only comes up like so often. Um, for Manadium, I'm playing three Ruin Hearts. Just because he is your best extender throughout the entire thing, a lot of your combos will purely start off of him and just build from there. Um, after that, I'm playing two Visa Starfrost. Only reason I'm playing two is because I'm a cheap whore and I do not have three. Um, to remedy that, though, I do play one Elemental Hero Prisma. Which um, is jank. Total jank. Very much, but it is helpful when it comes down to situations where your hands are not the best. Um, if you have Rhoda, Rhoda is going to be your best way to search him out. Um, but you could also just use Rhoda to search out one of the other monsters. Um, some people are using Hero. A Hero Lives, but personally, for me, that's not the best because paying the four thousand just to get it out is not a good idea. Um, when it comes down to the tuners, um, I'm playing one Fearless, just because it's a good kind of offhand one to have, just because you don't know if you're not going to open up the other ones and if you're going to find a way to search them or not. Um, I'm also playing three Torrids, just because it's the new one. Um, it's also a great extender. Um, one of the lines um, purely runs off of Torrid. It's a little jank, but it is what it is. Um, I'm also playing three Meek, because Meek is another great extender. Um, I'd keep it at three, some people are playing it at two, but just having that extra copy gives you a little extra wiggle room when it comes down to certain combos. So which one, what does Meek do? Like um, Meek, when, um, let me explain to Torrid first, sorry, Torrid, when Torrid is destroyed by card effect um, or battle, it will send itself to the graveyard and it will then special summon another Mana Dome tuner from your deck. So usually when you're using Torrid, you're gonna go into your Meek. Um, what Meek does is once Meek is destroyed um, by battle or card effect, most of the time you're gonna be destroying it with your own card effect, it'll um, go to the graveyard and then it will search out another Meek and special summon it and then from there, you get the option to either make it a level four or keep it at two. Um, most plays they will be switching it to a four um, unless you just don't have anything left in your extra deck to do. Um, the next synchron or the next tuners are two assault synchrons. I play two just because it's a nice spot. They don't come up too often, but uh, there's times where you kind of just don't draw into your toward or your meeks, and it's just a good free special summon after paying seven. Um, for hand traps, I will be playing. Three Ash Blossom. Um, playing three, I mean, it's it's good. It's better on a side deck, but personally, I played in the main just because you don't know what you're going to go up against most times. Um, that's pretty much it for main deck hand traps. Um, next is a mini Scareclaw or a mini um, Kashtira engine, mostly revolving around Scareclaw Kashtira. And I play one of him and three Fenrirs. The only reason I play three Fenrirs is because it's just filling out the deck. Once I get some more cards, it'll be dropping down to either two or one. Um, there's a couple plays where uh, if you open up a uh, Kashtira Fenrir and Scareclaw Kashtira, you can kind of just bump yourself into Lightheart, which gets your plays kind of started. Um, that's it for main deck monsters. Next, um, I have Field Spells. We have two Peaceful Planets. Three is usually what most people do, but I keep it at two just because it gets a little bricky sometimes when you draw into like two of the field spell. Um, and it's searchable, right? Yeah, it's searchable off of um, uh, Mana Dome of Positions, which is a, something I'll get into in just a second. Next, I play uh, two Primitive Planet Rockphobias. Um, 
Again, I just keep it at two just because it's a good little middle spot. Uh, this will be searching out your Scare Claws and your Visa Starfrost um, if you're in the mood for either or. Uh, that's it for the field spells. Uh, for standard spells, I am playing one Obsession, one Mana Dome Imagining, uh, two Scare Claw Rivals, one Rhoda, and one Terraforming. Um, Obsession is going to be your extender. I'm going to bump it up to two at some point. I just don't have one at the moment. Um, Obsession is how you're going to be popping most of your cards to get your tuner effects. So what it'll do is it'll target one monster on the uh, field, pop it, and it'll search you Peaceful Planet. Um, if you do not already control, or if you do control Peaceful Planet already on the field and you use this card, it'll allow you to search for one Mana Dome spell, which will be Mana Dome Imaginings. Um, imaginings, what that's going to do, it's basically like a pot of duality. You'll be drawing two off the top of your deck by revealing one mana dome, um, and then choosing one card in your hand and putting it on the bottom of the deck. Um, so it's good if you either have the free card in hand to get it, or if you're struggling to find just those few extra cards. Um, that's it for spells. I mean, Rhoda, self-explanatory. Scareclaw Rival, that's um, just got a, a free revive for Scareclaws. It's not once per turn. So it works great that way. Um, for the last little bit, I just have three traps. I have Venadome Refraining, Imperm, which I should probably bump up to two or three, and Scareclaw Splash. Do you only have the one? I only have the one. Well, my other one's in my uh, branded deck, and I just haven't taken it out yet. Okay. Um, what Refraining is, it's a Omni Negate. Um, you have to control a Synchro to use it. Um, if you activate it while having Visa Starfrost on the field, um, it'll negate the effect of a card, and then you can also shuffle a card back into the deck. Um, this is going to be your like biggest defense against things like Dark Ruler, um, seeing as how it's going to be your only interaction in that moment. Um, Imperm, self-explanatory. Uh, Sclash. Sclash is just another Omni Negate, like I said before. Um, there's times where you'll have just Lightheart on the field, and if you're lucky to search this out or hard draw it, it's just a free Omni Negate that sits there, and I mean, it's just, it's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> next is the extra deck. Uh, for my Lynx, or actually, yeah, for my Lynx, I am playing one Apollosa, one Cross Sheep, and two Light Hearts. Um, the only reason I'm playing two light hearts is three is just a little bit too much and two is just the sweet spot. If you play it at one, there's times where your light heart will get negated and it's kind of just a dead body on board. Um, cross sheep, cross sheep's great. It's going to be establishing a lot of your final boards. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that if cross sheep's already on the field and you have a synchro that it's pointing at and you special summon a f uh, fusion to the other side, um, you gain the benefits of both the Synchro effect and the Fusion effect from Cross Sheep. Um, Apollosa is just a good, uh, just a good board builder. Um, just, you know, free negates when it comes down to certain things. Um, next, I'll be going on to my Fusions. Uh, I am playing two Vicious Astrolabes. Um, I, I tried playing it at one before, and it, it's just super inconsistent when you only have one. Um, a lot of the combos you need to because it's just a good free body if you have Visus and one of the uh, 1500 attack 21 defense monsters in your graveyard or our field if it's just like dead on board um, after that we have our synchros uh, my lower levels I only am playing three eights at the moment I'm playing Visus uh, Armatara uh, Stardust Excel and Stardust Dragon um, the only reason I'm playing Stardust Dragon in this is for the times that you're kind of in a tough spot and you're using Excel, and let's say someone tries to imperm it or um, Valor. Valor or bounce it to hand or something like that, you can use its quick effect to tag out and go into a Stardust that's unaffected. So it's pretty much just like a, a good kind of last minute plan if you don't have anything. Um, Visus Armor Atara is one of the new ones that came out in the most recent set, Duelist Nexus. Oh, it's pretty though. It is very pretty. Um, what it is, is when it's on field, it's considered Visus Starfrost, which helps you go into your link plays. Um, its other effect is that you are allowed to search for one card in your deck that um, lists Visus Starfrost on it in its text. So that can be a field spell, that can be just a standard spell, or it can be... Um, like a trap or anything like that. So it's pretty good. 
Um, another thing you can do with it is you can use his effect to target and pop a card on your field and give itself 800. You're not really going to be using the 800 much because he doesn't stay on board too long anyways to make any decent plays. You're just using his effect to pop to get more benefits from your tuners. And what, they, they reborn themselves, right? Or like do other stuff when they're popped? Um, well, like I said before, with Torrid, it's a free special summon of yeah. a different tuner. Meek, it special summons itself and it gives you um, a higher level play when it comes to things like that. Um, that's it for the 8s. Uh, for the 10s, I'm playing a total of 5. Bro, why? Because why not? You don't need enough 10s. So um, I'm first playing Ice Jade. Um, she's great. She's just um, good protection when there's boards with her on it. Um, it's just a good response because anytime you use her effect in response to someone else's effect, it can banish that card that's it's responding to. So it's just good for clearing things off board and just overall, overall protecting your monsters. Um, next, I am playing one Baron because you never don't need a Baron in your deck. Um, after that, uh, Chinging. Chinging is an iffy for me just because it hasn't come up a lot recently. I just added it in a few days ago. Um, it's good for just standard play so like if you're going turn two and you still have some of your monsters on field and you have the ability to go into another 10 it's just another big body um my next one is let me stack those there is um bestial disparter bestial disparter is great for this deck just because it it gives you more extension um you get the free opportunity to revive a banished light or dark monster. So a lot of the time when you're making like Vicious Astroloud and you banish your uh, Visa Starfrost and your right cart, you can either choose to special summon the right cart back or the Starfrost. A lot of time you'll be picking the Starfrost because it keeps the plays going, but um, it's just a good body. Um, what it also does is that um, if a uh, quick effect, if your opponent does uh, activates an effect, you can either choose to shuffle something in from your banished pile or their banished pile. And if it's from yours, you can pop one card on their field. And if you um, shuffle something back in from their banished pile, it will um, negate the effect that it's responding to. Um, the last one that I'm playing is Chaos Angel because Chaos Angel's great. Um, he just provides protection for a lot of your cards, a lot like um, Ice Jade, but he just kind of does it a little bit better. Um, another good thing is if you're going turn two or um, you're just like continuing plays and he's special summoned he can target one card on the field and banish it which is just fantastic so if there's ever like a just a really picky monster that you're trying to get over and you can't and you bring him out it's just a free non-target banish which is always great um that's it for the tens i am only playing one level 12 and that is crimson dragon who is also a new one from the newest set um that's a lot of money he was when he first came out. He, right now, he's going for about $20. Really? Mm-hmm. That's depressing. A little bit. Um, so what he does um, is he, uh, I mean, <laughs> he's just a, a level 12 that um, when he's brought to the field, you can target another level 10. So let's say if you're going through the standard combo, you're going to be having Baron on field as early as possible to get past hand effects or hand traps and things like that. And if you bring him out, he'll target that card, and he'll shuffle himself back into deck, and then cheat you out another um, another monster that has the matching level to that card. So if you target Baron, you can just cheat out Disparter without going have to, without having to go down the route of going the um, Excel Revive Meek and then going into him. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, that's that's it for extra deck. It's not too complicated. Um, a lot of the time, I, I'm using a good chunk of my 10s throughout my plays, but it just makes it a lot more fun, which is words that I know. <laughs> um, last is side. My side deck is not the best, um, purely just because I don't really have the money for some of the better cards. Um, I am playing one Nibiru. I would definitely bump that up to three if you can. Um, one kaiju just because kaijus are great most of the time I main deck the kaiju because it's just good to draw into if you're going turn two um, after those two I am playing three droll and lock birds um, so why don't you main this <laughs> uh, I like having the consistency of a free like a freer deck just because Do not if, have 
like you have enough room for, for hand traps. You're playing hand traps. I know. I'm playing Ash. That's kind of where the drop off is. Why aren't you, like take out the Imperm or? Maybe I don't know. But uh, Droll's good this format. Um, I definitely pick them up. Some of them are cheap. I picked up the Eldorados. They're cheap as shit. Um, but it's just great at stopping. Like this deck specifically is very weak to Droll. As soon as you get hit, you're, a lot of your plays are just going to kind of stop. Which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, after that, I am playing one Effect Veiler. Um, I'd bump that up to two at most, just because it's, it's good, but... A lot of the time you're going to be focusing on other things. How do you not have more Veilers? They're commons. Because I'm cheap. What do you mean you're cheap? Thank you. Wait, hold on. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it for kind of the monster side of it. Um, I am playing one evenly matched. I'd kind of bump that up to two if you can. Um, I only play it at one because that's usually when I'm, I just don't play more than that. I think it's really good this format. Um, being able to get rid of like Labyrinth, uh, Altergeist is a rogue deck this format. Um, uh, basically any and all trap decks or Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Also, baiting and negate is really nice. Yeah. Um, Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment, this uh, format is great as well. I'd definitely bump that up to three if you have it. You play Judgment on a combo deck. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, next, I am playing Ice Dragon's Prison. Um, I think it's good for certain things, like if you're going up against Branded, just being able to steal one of their monsters for a turn is great. Um, it's not something I would highly recommend. Like I said, a lot of these are just uh, space fillers for the the side. Um, I definitely get rid of that. Also, I apologize. I know I'm switching the angles of the cards. It doesn't matter. They know what the cards are. Yeah, they know. Um, spells, I am playing one called by. One cross out. I would bump cross out up as well, just because um, this is a very droll heavy format. So having a three cross outs and drolls in your deck just helps. Uh, one harpies. One dark ruler. I'd bump dark ruler up to two. And finally, two Dark Holes. Um, Dark Hole has come up a couple times in a couple of the duels I've been in. Um, just being able to clear the field is great, especially if you get a very bricky hand. It also uh, triggers your own cards. And it triggers your own cards, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about it for my deck. Um, I can do combos, if you'd like. Want to, like... Yeah. Yeah, alright. That's right. fine. Let's do, like, one or two. Alright, so for combos, um, your main combo is going to revolve around you having these two in hand. Um, if you don't have Peaceful Planet, it's easy to get. Um, just hope that you start with one of the uh, tuners in your hand, just so that way you can continue your place through that. Actually, to make this a bit easier, we will zoom out a little bit, <laughs> and I'll give you a field center. Cool. Awesome. So, um, how this is going to start, you're going to normal summon Roomheart, you're going to activate his effect. Um, he will search for one Mana Dome card a good chunk of the time. You'll be searching out uh, Mana Dome Torrid. Uh, what you do from there is you will Special Summon Torrid right next to him. And if you have a Peaceful Planet, it's great. You're going to Special um, Activate it. And um, you'll be searching off of him uh, Visa Starfrost. So from here, you're going to activate your Visa Starfrost effect, targeting your Torrid. It'll pop your Torrid to Special Summon himself. Um, on resolution of his summon, you're going to go chain link one Torrid, chain link two Peaceful Planet. Peaceful Planet will grab your tuner and special summon it back. Well, Peaceful Planet is going to search out for another tuner and, er, sorry, well, Torrid's going to search out for another tuner and special summon it to the field. So usually off of this, you'll be searching for Meek. I'll put him there. And from here, um, as early as possible, it's great to get uh, Baron on your field. Just in case, like your opponent's holding on to a hand trap, or they're holding on to like a Nibiru or something, or they're trying to wait for your summons. So you're going to synchro for your ten. And this is on the fifth summon. It is, unfortunately. No, if, like that's actually great. Your fifth oh. summon is Baron, which means you can negate with Baron. No, this will be your sixth, because ah. he counts as another special once he comes back from graveyard. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a little harder, but it happens. Um, you'll special summon your Baron right there. And from here, your board's going to look a little funky just because you don't know what you're going to be doing next. But that is also why um, 
Vicious Astraloud is great in this deck. You can just banish both your um, your guys to Special Summon Vicious Astraloud from your deck. You're then going to activate Vicious Astraloud's effect, targeting your Meek and popping it. Uh, from there, your Meek's effect is going to go off, and it's going to Special Summon another one from your deck, and you'll be able to change its level. So from here, you're going to Special Summon another one. It's better to have that little gapped out. Um, you're going to change your Meek's level to 4, and from here, you're going to go into the new 12 by Synchro Summoning with those two into a 12, making Crimson Dragon. You're then going to activate Crimson Dragon's effect, targeting your Baron, and it'll shuffle itself back into the extra deck, and you will special summon Bestial Disparter. So once Disparter's on the field, this is where most of the combos pop off. You're going to activate his effect to special summon your Visa Starfrost that's banished back, and you will then link your Vicious or your um, Visus off, and go into your Lightheart. Lightheart will then search for the Scareclaw Field Spell, and you will then switch out your field spells, and this will allow you to search for Scareclaw Reichheart. So how Scareclaws work, it's great. Um, they have a very nice quirk where they can special summon themselves to an adjacent zone that another Scareclaw is in. So with things like this, you need to leave a gap where your uh, where your um, link's going to be, just so you have that adjacent zone. Unless it has an arrow that points down, you're not going to be able to special summon near it, and so it'd be a waste of time. Um, you will then special summon your Reichart, activate his effect. You will be searching for uh, Scareclaw Arrival, which is the revive spell. Also off of this, which is great, you get um, if you have three or more defense monsters on the field, you get to draw one card for free. So it gives you just a better hand um, if you're missing something or if you just need that little something extra, like a, an ash just to get ready for the next turn, you can draw a heart off the top. Um, <clears throat> from here, you're going to activate your arrival grabbing your Visus back from the graveyard. And from here, you're going to then Synchro for six, or for eight, my apologies, and go into Visus Armoratara. So when he's on the field, um, you're gonna use his search ability, and you're going to be searching out Menadome Reframing. Reframing is the, um, the, negate, the Omni Negate that I was telling you guys about before. Um, again, this is great for Dark Ruler, because once Dark Ruler hits the field, your monsters cannot respond. So just having this card alone is great. It, it just It's going to solidify you some more protection for your cards. Um, even if they don't, it's just a great Omni Negate. So this will come to your hand next. And at this point, you have your free card off of Reichart and your Mana Dome Refraining. Um, after this, you will then link both your Scareclaw Reichart and your Scareclaw Lightheart off and go into the best card in the deck, Scare, um, Cross Sheet. Um, so once he's here, um, you are then going to contact Fused yet again with um, Vis Visus and um, another one of your monsters. This is not a once per turn effect. You can do the contact Fuse as many times as you want, um, depending on the amount of copies that you have. Um, you will then banish those to special another Vicious right here. It is very important that you have it open to another zone that's adjacent to the cross sheet point because then you'll be able to activate cross sheep's effect. Um, if it is pointing at a fusion summoned monster, it will special summon a level 4 or lower from your graveyard. Um, and if it's pointing at a synchro monster, you get 700 attack boost to all your monsters permanently, which is great. Um, for the cross sheep effect to special, you're going to special summon back Manadome Torrid um, and from here you're going to synchro summon for a level 10 and you're going to be going into Chaos Angel. Um, when you're doing Chaos Angel this way um, it's not going to give you the benefits of doing the light and dark just because um, you're using just a dark to make it so you're only going to get the battle protection which doesn't seem like a lot but um, in a moment it will make sense. So um, with this board now you will have um, the once per duel effect of uh, Scarecrow Lightheart to special summon itself back if there is a Vicious, Vicious Starfrost on the field, which Vicious Armoratara considers itself Vicious Starfrost once it hits the field. From here, you will then link three using Vicious Armoratara, uh, Scarecrow Lightheart, and Cross Sheet to make Apollosa. Once Apollosa hits the field, she now has three negates, which are great. 
and um, she's protected from battle by Chaos Angel, which helps. Um, this is going to be your final board, um, at least for this combo. Um, you you get a lot of utility off of it. You get uh, Mana Dome Refraining, which is a uh, uh, negate on its own. You get your Baron Negate, which is great. You get your optional negate off of Disparter, which um, just depending on if you have a, an opponent that's banishing a lot, it might help. Um, protection off your Chaos Angel and three monster negates with Apollosa. Um, so in total you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if you're lucky enough to hard draw into like an Imperm or something, that bumps it up to seven, or if you have an Ash in hand, that's great. Um, you will lose to the Winged Dragon and Raw and a Kaiju, which sucks. But if your opponent's not playing a really screwy deck like that, you will be fine. And that is the combo. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all that clickbaity shit. And uh, 